Hi guys, welcome to your fifth Expo tutorial. Today we're doing UI alert views, which are those alerts that pop up, sort of like pop-up boxes on a web browser or on a uh, Windows-based or Macintosh-based application. And it's an interesting tutorial. It's not too difficult. You should be able to do it. There's not too much code involved in saying that it's mainly code, but there's not much involved. Uh, we'll also cover not action sheets, but alerts with multiple buttons and then the buttons which will link to actions. So we'll get started. Again, as always, I'm doing a single view. Again, it doesn't matter. And we're going to call this alert. You, I'm only setting it to iPhone. I'm not using storyboards. That's up to you. Doesn't make any difference again. And so create that project. Go into your project summary. Set the iOS SDK deployment target to 5.0. Get rid of landscape left and right. And go into your viewcontroller.xib. Set the view to none and add a button. The reason I'm rushing through this so much is we've been through it every other tutorial so I'm not going to go into do much detail again. We only show you to the background as I always do just to make it more interesting. We'll, let's put Christmas colours in. I'm going to get rid of my right view just so you're able to see it. You don't need to do that. And uh, after UI view controller, curly bracket, hit enter, control or right click on the button depending on whether you're using a MacBook, what your settings are. Just right click essentially and drag the blue line to underneath the curly brackets and you want to make sure you've got action selected id touch up inside sender and we're going to call this uh alert and then connect okay now we can start typing the code to actually initiate the alert um we're going to do it in the alert field at the end of the tutorial i'll show you how to uh use the ui alert so it pops up as soon as the app opens, which is pretty much the same except we put a view did load, but I'll show you that at the end of the tutorial. Uh, let's get started. We need to create a UI, and we don't need to import any libraries for this. We need to create a UI alert view, and we're going to call it alert. Uh, yeah, we'll call it alert. And then we need to do two curly brackets, UI alert view alloc, because we do need to allocate some memory. Uh, at the end of the second curly bracket, hit a semicolon, and then we'll start typing within those curly brackets. So, in it with title, uh, message, delegate, so the really long one that you'll see with type ahead. Again, you need to use type ahead here, because it will take you so long to type it out. Okay, uh, in it with title, so that's the title of the alert. So, I'm going to type the text to be title, and then with message, I'll type message, just so when the alert pops up, you'll see where everything correlates. Um, make sure you do at then two talk marks because it will be an NS string. Obviously, it's a string because it's going to be text. Delegate nil. We don't need a delegate for this. Or well, we'll do self actually. So do self. You might get an error if you do nil. Cancel button title. And we can call this cancel. Other button titles. Uh, this is where we can have any other button. So let's have another button called second button. Or second button. Comma nil. And it's giving you an error, obviously, which is that we're missing a curly bracket at the start, which we're not. So let's go through the code and see what's gone wrong. UI alert, alert view, in a bit time. Now let's keep going and see if that fixes itself, which it may. Then we want to do alert, show. And in that, and now let's go through. And it's giving me the error is here. And this is a good debugging lesson too. If you've got a uh, little red circle with a dot in the middle, it means it's got a suggestion for how to fix it. If you've got a red one with an exclamation mark, which it's gone to now, it means that there's an error and it's not quite sure what to do about it. That's up to you. If there's a yellow triangle, I think it is. It just means there's a warning. It may cause problems. It may not might just be, you know, you've got a variable you're not using, what's the point of having it? You should get rid of it. Uh, let me go through this code and we'll see what's gone wrong. Because it looks like it's all correct. So, um, yeah, it's a bit bizarre. Why don't we get rid of this second button title and then we'll see if that helps. We'll try running it, and we've still got the errors, which means we've done something wrong. 
and the issue is quite complex actually. The reason being what we should have done is, well you've got UI alert and I always do this, I'm not sure why, but th this is important for you guys to remember because you'll probably do it occasionally, is we've done UI alert for you, alert, and then we've just done this and obviously that's not giving us alert what, just alert UI alert view, no, it needs to be UI alert view equals and then that's what it equals and let's add in the second button title and we'll call this well what are we going to make the second button do let's make the second button um let's make the second button come up with an, another alert so other so if we run this now what we're going to see is we're going to we're going to uh simulators already in use so i'll just quit the simulator and come back to our application try running it now um, what you'll see ha will happen is the alert will come up, but if we click the other, um, button that will comes up, when the alert comes up, nothing's going to happen, as you'll see now. So click your button. Here you can see the title, which is the in it with title, message, in it with message, other button, cancel, oh, sorry, cancel button title, which is cancel, so if I set that to go away or something, that, that button text will say go away, and other, so if I click cancel, the alert goes away. If I click other, the alert goes away, it's not doing anything. So that's why we needed to do something. So, underneath your IB action, do void. And we'll call it alert view. Colon. UI alert view. Asterisk. Alert view. Clicked button at index ns integer. Um, and then button index, curly brackets, enter. That one, you're not going to get the whole thing type ahead, you'll get little parts of it, chunks of it in type ahead. So you'll, you'll have to type it up. I'll just stop for a second to let you catch up with that. Look over the code. I'll go through it for a moment quickly. What we're doing here is we're setting a UI alert. We're creating the alert. Here we're showing the alert, but we need to set the values of the alert. So that's what we're doing here. Obviously it has a value, so we need to give it some memory. That's what we're doing here. We're giving it memory. Then we need to set the title, the message, the delegate. The delegate's not important. Don't worry about what that does. The cancel button title, which is just the text on the cancel button. And the other button titles, which are any other buttons you want. If you wanted more than one button, you just do comma and then another button and then another comma nil. If you wanted no buttons, you get rid of that other entirely, get rid of the comma and just have nil. Okay, so hopefully you've caught up now. Let's go into the void and what we want to do is if button index, which we've called the click button index, we've called that button index, button index equals equals one which means that the other button was pressed then we want to create let, let's just do create another alert so just copy all of this code and although you don't need to because it's not a global variable it's probably a good idea to call it alert to just so you know the difference what I mean by it's not a global variable is anything outside of this IB action here um, anything outside of that won't know anything about what's in there if, if I set uh, UI alert view alert up here and then just set the value of alert in there, then it will go, then this area will go, well, there is something called alert. If I scroll down the page, I can see that alert's been set to that. So there you go. But since it's not a global variable, it doesn't matter if we called this, we also called this alert. But for the purposes of simplicity, we're going to call it alert2. And we'll just say other title, other message, just so you know it's a different alert, and other cancel. And we don't want there to be any other buttons here because this is the other, this is the link to the other button. So just nil. Now let's see if we run that, whether that works. Click the button, cancel works. Now other, there we go, the other message has appeared. And if we click other, cancel, there you go. So if I click cancel, nothing. If I click other, then the other message will come up. Now what you're probably wondering, for those of you who have done object-oriented programming before, is why that's a 1, not a 0. Because as you would know, in a computer array, it's going to be zero. Because zero is sort of the equivalent of one, I guess you could say. The reason being is that the cancel button title has the value of zero in the array of buttons. And the other button title has the array tag of one in this particular button array. So that's UI alerts for you. There's not much more to it. I'll cover action sheets in another tutorial. 
I personally don't like action sheets. Why use them when you can use this? Action sheets are the alerts pretty much that come up from the bottom and sort of just stay there. I'll also, in a later tutorial, cover using text boxes within the alert, which um, you can fiddle around a bit, so I could try, you know, changing alert. So fiddle around, see what you can do. You know, you can insert a sub view, put an input view, so do a semi uh, uh, square bracket alert, and then have a look at what else you can do with it. Because there's a lot you can do. Is visible, uh, make text. Uh, uh, you can, if you wanted to add text, you can make the text right to the left or the right. You can detect when touches have occurred. You can choose the number of buttons. You can do a whole lot of things. So fiddle around with them, because obviously I can't go through every single one here. And a lot of them are in the Apple documentation, which, if I'm honest, isn't the best. But it does cover things to a good enough extent that you can use them if you want. Uh, I can set the background colour, which I might put in the description if there's one that I find of interest. I haven't personally gone through them much. I haven't needed to, but I might go through and see if I find anything interesting to show you. And then I'll put that in the description. And I'll constantly update the description if I find anything of interest or if Apple changes the libraries. And that means that occasionally Apple will, though, create a whole new way of creating an alert view. In my previous tutorial, Changing Screens, Apple's now deprecated that way of doing things. So you can do it, but in a year or two time, it just won't work. And you have to use a different a method. And I still do use nibs. I'm old-fashioned about that. I don't like storyboards, which is fine. Apple's not deprecating nibs. They just, most people use storyboards now. You don't need to use storyboards. There's actually no advantage. People think there is. It doesn't save, may save the most minor space on the phone, but it really doesn't make a big difference. It really just complicates things, in my opinion. It's much easier to have uh, separate files for separate screens. Anyway... No, I did promise I would show you how to create the alert when the view loads. So, literally, cut this code here, the alert view, and under super view did load, press enter a few times, paste it, and then run it, and that should work. Ah, there we go, I didn't even press the button, and I'll show you that again if you want to see it. And that just appeared, and the other button should still work. So, and that's the same with everything. If I've done a tutorial on how to play a video, and I've done the tutorial to play a video when a button's clicked, but you want to do it as soon as the view opens, put it in view did load. It's that simple. If you've got any questions or concerns about this tutorial or any others, go onto our website, 99centsappdevelopment.com, go to the contact us or get in touch page, and just feel free to send us through an email or reply within 24 hours with an answer to your question. Or just comment on the video and we'll also reply to you. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. Um, and if you've subscribed, feel free to send us three suggestions of videos you'd like to see. And if we can do it, we'll guarantee that we'll have it done within one week and up on YouTube. There's also more information at 99centsappdevelopment.com. The link will be in the description as will some other information. Also, your peers are helpful. So... Uh, if you comment on the video with a question, it may not necessarily be us who answer, it might be someone else from YouTube, and we'll make sure the answer is correct, otherwise we'll move it, but feel free to answer a ask a question, and I know a lot of you will be in a rush, I've found this a problem, which is there's been tutorials like, I have wanted to know how to do an alert view, back then there wasn't the documentation to show how to add extra buttons, and you know, I'd write a comment on a video, and you want to get a reply for months, that won't happen, so feel free to write a comment, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And look forward to the next tutorial. And in the next tutorial, I'm not 100% sure about what we'll do. So I'm looking forward to hearing your suggestions. At the moment, I think it might be something to do with playing videos. But I'm not sure. Other ideas could include more things about various UI objects. I'm thinking about doing a temperature converter. Which will be an app rather that covers things that we've already done. And that will be done every so often. And... Because I think it's important. I've shown you all these various skills. And some of you will be able to put them into an app. But some of you will need me to show you how to do that. So you're competent enough to do that. So I might show you how to do a temperature converter. Or that might watch your tutorial 10. But I'll probably do something to do with playing video or sound. I'm also uh, tutorial 7. Which will be in two tutorials time. I'm going to be showing you how to with uh, the iOS SDK 6.1 
how to post things to Twitter and Facebook without having to use their documentation and libraries, which is really incredible. So look forward to that and see you next time.